you know, uh, people like stories, right? So let me tell you a story to start, okay? So this is a story when I was like five or six years old. So five or six years old, um, I'm at home. My parents are at work. I'm with my grandma, uh, just me and my brother, okay? So one day I thought to myself, is like, you know what? I want to do something to surprise my mom. Like I want to surprise my parents, especially my mom, right? So I was like, oh, what can I do to make my mom just really happy? And I said, you know what? I'm going to go visit her work, okay? Now here's the thing. Uh, I've never like I've never gone there before like by bike. So I'm like, oh, I've only been there by car. And I was a pretty smart kid back then. So I, I memorized the way to get to my mom's work, right? And I was like, oh, this is gonna be so cool. I can't wait to see the look on my mom's face. And so I get on my bike and I'm riding my bike and my bike has training wheels on it, right? So this, remember, I'm only like five, six years old. I'm you know, riding my bike and I'm like, okay, I remember this. And then I get to this hill. Right. And this hill that goes down and it's pretty steep. And I was like, wow, this is it. Like once I take this route, there's no turning back because this is a really steep hill. And I'm scared. I'm like, gosh, can I really do this? But then I thought to myself, this is for my mom. This is for my mom. You can do it. So I just went down that hill. I was scared, but I just went down. it. And as I was going down, like cars are honking at me. Right. So I'm like going, oh, my gosh. Right. Like they're cheering me on. So I'm like so happy that these cars are honking. And, and I'm kind of like, Whoa, this is me. So I'm going all the way down and I get to, you know, it flattens out. And then I start riding and riding and cars just keep going by honking and honking and honking. And I'm sitting there like I thought to myself, these cars know that I'm going to see my mom and surprise her. And they're like going, go Sky, yeah, you can do it. But the reason they were honking at me is because I was on the freeway. So I'm a five-year-old on a bike with training wheels on the freeway. Right. And these are why all these cars are honking at me. And I'm just thinking that everything's going great. I'm like, wow, you know what? I can't wait to make my mom so happy. And what eventually happens is uh, a motorcycle pulls over, picks me up and takes me to the police station. Right. And, you know, I, I was I, I, I had no idea what was happening because, you know, I'm this, this kid. I'm like, what's going on? I'm just crying. The police officer gave me like a chocolate bar. They're like, we're calling your parents. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, you know, when a kid hears the word, I'm calling your parents, we think it's something really bad. Right. That's what we think. And here I was stuck there. My parents had to leave work to come pick me up at the police station. You can't imagine how worried they were. And. Here's the thing. When I think about this story, it, it, here I am as this five, six-year-old, young, passionate, tons of energy. But what am I doing? I'm doing something that can actually kill me. The intent was good, but what I actually did wasn't right. And it, it kind of reminds me, this is kind of funny, guys. It reminds me... <laughs> of this Bible verse in Hosea chapter four, verse six. And when you read this verse, it's kind of funny guys, because what it says is my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's true. In this situation, I could have been destroyed, meaning I could have died. Think about, remember that hill I was going down? The hill was the on-ramp to the freeway. And I'm this five-year-old kid on training wheels. I could have died. Any That's why all these cars were honking at me like, what the heck is going on? Can you imagine if you were one of the cars and you're seeing this five-year-old kid riding his bike along the freeway? I could have died. But it, it actually made me think a lot deeper because... I think even when it comes to us and our faith, you know, in the very beginning, we have, you know, we're very young. We're very passionate, energetic. We want to do everything for God. And we're like, yeah, God, we can do it for you. But the way we do it may not be the best way, right? Like I remember times where I tried to share the gospel with my friends in high school and it didn't work out. Like It, it was terrible. Like, you know, it was almost like I was judging them. Like, hey, you know what kind of life you're living? You're living a life of sin, heathen. 
<laughs> right? So here I am. And even though I have the passion, because of the lack of knowledge, because of the lack of, the lack of wisdom, right? What happens is I, you, we kind of start making these mistakes, right? We start, we end up hurting people instead of helping them, which was the original intent. And it made me actually think more deeply about why it's so beneficial for the young people in the church to be very connected to the older members in the church too. Because this is going to be, this is the reality. The older elder members in the church, you know, they're married, they have kids, they're working eight, nine hours a day, taking care of their families. Like they're spending so much time doing these things. However, they have all this wisdom, they have all this knowledge that can help the younger people. Why? Younger people, one thing they have is time. They have energy. They have that passion. They want to do something for Jesus, right? And if we don't bring these two together, what happens is we'll have a lot of people that do things out of just pure passion, right? Pure, just, I want to do something for God. And this causes more problems. And I, I do think that one of the things that does need to happen inside of churches is the connection between the young and the old. 